So you like depth and you like fields. Why don't you put them together and get some depth of field? Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai. I'm Kai and today we are back in Blender once again. Taking a look at some depth of field, some some DOF. And uh, a lot of people have been asking me about this because uh, it's 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 not like not like super difficult, but if you don't know like a couple of the things and some of it's kind of weird. So I figure I'd break a little bit of it down today. Just the basics for you all. Uh, like usual. So I have this model of these two dogs here, these adorable dogs. Uh, they're unfortunately tied to something, which is like, I want to just untie them. I don't know what's going on there, but they're adorable other than that. Um, I got this off of 3dscans.com. Link will be down in the description as always. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and with our lamp real quick, I'm going to go to rendered viewport shading. And I'm going to, uh, th that lighting looks really good already. I like it the way it is, but I'm going to change this to an area lamp. And I'm going to change this shape from rectangle to square and then just bump up the size real quick just to get a bigger, softer light. Then hit Shift D and move it over here. Double tap R like that. And hit G to move it over. You know, rotate R, X, R, Z, stuff like that. Random basic stuff. Uh, R to move and stuff, whatnot. And G to rotate. and G to move, R to rotate. But yeah, so getting into the depth of field. I'm going to go ahead and select our camera. Hit zero on my numpad. Uh, and I'm just going to move the camera around just a little bit, so just double tap R a little bit, hit G to move it around, uh, just to a place where I want uh, to, to where I like it, and I think this is, looks like a pretty good place, I kind of want them a little bit closer, and you know, maybe some stuff in the background to be further away, uh, that's really what you want to keep in mind with depth of field, you want to have stuff closer to the camera and further away from the camera, that really helps a lot. So I'm just going to do something like that, and then, you know, this stuff back here will be a little bit of depth of field and whatnot, so we'll do that for now. Now, with our camera selected, you can see this is a little depth of field thing here. If you click that on, then you should see that it doesn't do anything. <laughs> the reason is because you're not telling it to do anything yet, specifically. So uh, the way we do that is we turn the focus distance up and down, but now you can see I can't really see where the focus distance is, like, per se, so I can just guess, like, oh, that's not clear, so let me... Turn it up a little bit. Let me turn it up a little bit more. Oh, that's a little clear, you know. But you, we can get this more precise by actually going ahead. And let's turn this focus distance way down um, for now. And what we can do is we can go out of the camera by middle mouse dragging uh, and clicking. Uh, we can go to limits. And limits is viewport display limits. And now you can see this little this little line pops up. And this little line is what's going to help us out. You see that little plus, that yellow plus? That needs to be on the dogs that's where that's where I want this to be focused on so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and go up to focus distance and then just scroll that you know you see we can see the plus now that's what we can see that's what it was doing before but we couldn't see it we had to turn limits on or else we couldn't see anything so I'm gonna put that on about about right there maybe about 10 actually 10 was if what was on default wow cool that's why that's why I didn't know like I changed it all but if your camera was closer or further away then it looked like it would have looked like it would change a little bit but anyway still so now you're going, okay, well, I got the focus distance, but things still aren't really blurry in the background or in the foreground. So how do we fix that? Well, my friends, we go ahead and fix that by turning down the f-stop here. So if I turn the f-stop down, you can see stuff in the background gets a little more blurred and their faces are still kind of clear. And the lowest it goes is 0.1. Uh, you can put in other values if you type it in. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, you can. You put in other values, values but it just starts getting really kind of weird. So I recommend only just going with the 0.1. That's pretty depth of fieldy already. Um, now, if I move the focus distance around, you can see that other parts will get clear and other parts will not be clear. I'm going to turn my overlays off real quick. Um, other parts will be clear and other parts won't be. So I can have the dog up top's face be clear by kind of rotating the camera up like this a little bit. Maybe getting like an up angle shot. It looks pretty cool, right? Maybe something like that. And then getting the focus distance of about, let's see, maybe about 9.5 maybe. Um, or maybe we can just back up the camera just a little bit, just moving it around a little bit, get a little bit of a different angle. I kind of want to get like this really dynamic. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll do like this. Maybe we'll showcase the, the, the little dog, the little, little, little pupperino. We'll showcase the little pupperino here. So I'll turn the depth field down a little bit too much. There we go. That looks good. So that's some very natural depth of field there. You don't want to usually go all the way unless you're doing something specific. But with just images like this, I recommend just going with a little bit, maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.4 even. Um, looks pretty good. I'm going to give these dogs a texture real quick just because, a uh, material real quick, just a color. Uh, we'll go with like a bluish, I guess. Sure. Why not? Uh, so that looks pretty good. I like it. Now the depth of field, uh, there's a couple other options here. We have blades. Um, and this stuff, what it does is if I turn my f-stop up a little bit more, 
the ratio you probably won't be able to see with this but the ratio kind of affects if it's a circle or not so if i turn this up then they won't really be circular they'll be more like ovalish um the rotation obviously only works if they're not circles <laughs> so if you turn this to something that's not a circle if i zoom in here you should be able to see very very slightly if i could if i could if i can move there we go a little bit of lag the depth, the depth of field will give you a little bit of lag by the way so don't worry about that but the ratio if i can get it to do it maybe a little bit you can see it's shifting but you can't really tell that it's not a circle but you just believe me okay if i had just like a regular like uh circle that i blurred and like if maybe i was doing embers you'd be able to tell the ratio kind of changes and makes it not a circle or it makes it more of an oval and the and the rotation obviously just rotates it around so you can play around with those if you don't want circles uh and the blades the blades makes it so it's not a, an actual circle so it takes it, some of the the vertices away from it and makes it like triangular and uh and not as smooth so if i turn that view very 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 smallly you'll be able to see that there's a little bit more detail in there if i turn all the way down uh there's less detail because uh they're triangles they're triangles and they're less less vertices the blades is what it does so i think that's on five by default i think so um but yeah so that f-stop is what you're going to want to do a lot of people are like oh, nothing's changing that's because you got to play with the f-stop if you don't do anything to the f-stop the default value is 5.6 is that right really 5.6 is the default value. That's a weird default value, whatever. Um, but anyway, we'll just scroll that down. You see, if it's up here, it's not going to do anything. No matter what you have the focus distance on, it's not going to change whatsoever if it's, if it's if the fo if the f-stop is too high. So turn the f-stop down, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.3. Now you got this nice focus distance you can play around with uh, and do some cool cool shots. But um, but yeah, so that is going to be it for basic depth of field stuff. Super easy, super simple to uh, to do once you know that f-stop little trick there. And of course. It doesn't work at all if you don't have it enabled. So that is that. And there's also a little bit of a depth of field thing up here, the max size, which I'm not really going to tell you to mess around with because it doesn't help too much unless you're doing like some super, like right where I says max size of the bokeh shape for the depth of field. Lower is faster. So like if you're doing like super big things and you might want to play around with this, like if I put this on... If I put this on one, then that'll be like super small. You can see the max size. If if I if I zoom in here, the max size. If I put that, if I have that on one, then it won't let anything be bigger than one. So it'll tell you, okay, well you have all these options on the camera, right? You have all this f stop f stop stuff, but maybe you don't want it to be that big. So maybe I want to put this on one, and if I have this on a thousand like regular, then you see, oop oop oop, you see how big that is, right? Maybe I don't want it to be that big, but I want the f stop to stay that number. So I can just come in here and turn the max size to maybe ten and and 10 and there we go and now it's much less depth of field but the f-stop is still the same so uh that looks pretty good so i uh, hope you boys and girls enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one um but until then bye bye